It is so difficult to justify getting one of these used when they're not far off the price of a new one. Video, and I hope you enjoy. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're taking a look at a 2021 Honda Civic hatchback. This is the sport trim, so it's about one level up from the base trim. And this is the 10th generation Honda Civic. Uh, so they just did a redesign in 2022, but I'm a big fan of the styling and the looks of this uh, 10th generation Civic. So we'll take a walk around, we'll do a drive, do a night drive as well. We'll talk about the features, what this competes with, and you know my impressions of it. Painted in this nice white, this is just a very good looking, tried and true Honda design. I like the front end of this car compared to the redesign. It looks a little bit less bold, smoother lines. Kind of reminds me of modern EVs. I like the black accents all over. I'm a big fan of black chrome deletes and stuff like that. Those wheels look awesome. This is a hatchback. One of the class leading um, storage boots in the subcompact sedan hatchback class. Just a ton of usable space back here. You get a nice cargo cover. You can easily fold down the seats, giving yourself an absolutely absurd amount of loading space. Very practical probably equivalent to a small SUV, maybe even better, and you get a spare tire. Really just a practical, well-rounded package. Easy grab handles to close, like this little spoiler. Kind of not a big fan of the split glass look, like this fake non-functional black vents. I think it looks good. Like the, the diffuser in the rear, those two exhaust pipes look awesome. Just a very well styled, good looking, compact four door sedan. We are running 235 40R18 wheels on here. There are tires on these wheels that they just look really good. They're Continentals. Check out this back seat. Sitting behind my driving position, five foot ten. Trying to put my head back in the headrest. I do hit. You do reduce uh, some practicality in the rear seats with the hatchback, but. And if I get into a comfortable position to put my head back, no problem. Plenty of uh, rear leg space. Pretty Spartan back here. I do like that we get a little bit of leather on the outside, or maybe like it's like a soft faux leather. But even this cloth material looks very nice. I bet it'll hold up very well to time. No cup holders in the center. Decent amount of door storage, but a little bit lacking back here, but you can fit somebody. Great for an Uber driver, great for a small family, because you do get ISO points in both sides. But no climate control back here, so that may be a deal breaker if you want to keep your child um, well conditioned with the air. Yeah, very nice interior. We'll check it out up there. No sunroof. Get some grab handles, speaker grill, all plastic. Doesn't feel great, but it doesn't feel cheap. Ingress was pretty easy. Egress, you have to duck your head a little bit with that hatch. Premium recommended, interesting. 
take a look at that engine. So this Civic hatch starts with the base trim, the LX, and it gets, gets a 174 horsepower, 1.5 liter, four cylinder turbocharged engine. So 174 horsepower, 162, I think, pound foot of torque. Be eager to try it out. A little bit underpowered compared to that Acura Integra we just had. But look at that, beautiful engine bay. Get 31 MPG in the city, 40 in the highway, a little bit down from the sedan because of that hatch profile. This is mated to a CVT transmission, front wheel drive. We'll talk more about where this stands in the space. Absolutely good looking car. The manual, this would be a great first car for an enthusiast. Very well-known reliability, good looks. And plenty of features that you would need in your daily driver. Ingress, egress into the front seat isn't that great for me, but I have plenty of space up here. And this is just a comfortable place to be. Part of the sport trim, you get bigger center screen leather steering wheel, Apple CarPlay, wired down here. There's a little bit of kind of storage down there. And you also get, uh, I think it's like an eight speaker sound system. So we get this nice digital gauge, decent resolution, pretty clear though. And then you get the center screen, Apple CarPlay, that's all you need. Uh, their infotainment Hondas is, Nothing to write home about. Pretty outdated, but nice and responsive. You can hit phone to easily get back to Apple CarPlay. That's very nice. You get one zone climate control, auto, all that good stuff. Some storage up here. You get your drive selector. I like the physical gear selector. Brake hold, parking brake. Uh, only drive mode is an eco mode, and then you could shift into S if you want to be a little bit more spirited with that CVT. Looking at the center gauge, you have your controls for your uh, your infotainment, volume up, down, all that stuff. You can scroll through the different menus that you would like to access. Let's leave it on. What's this one? Boost pressure, I guess. Interesting. Oil life. I do like that it's just kind of dedicated option for each. And a constant miles per hour in the center. Constant fuel gauge. Uh, temperature of the engine on the left. And then you get on the right, you get uh, a lot of standard safety systems on the base LX trim. Adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, collision avoidance and emergency braking, all physical controls to disable, manual adjustment seats, same kind of cloth material, feels like it would hold up to time, uh, manual adjusting all portions. You do get some softer materials up here that just feel very high quality. I do like this carbon fiber, kind of scratchy material, weaved. Overall, looks very nice. I'm sure this interior would hold up to time. And for about a $24,000 as new in 2021 car, it is a good deal. But before we set off, I will say that I was looking for Honda Civics and comparing it to a Corolla, Elantra and all that. And it's just so difficult to justify getting one of these used when they're not far off the price of a new one. Now I know in this category price range, Couple hundred dollars may matter, a couple thousand and stuff, but if you have good credit, you might be able to roll into a loan. Last but not least, good cup holder storage, very deep center console. Good visibility all around. So overall, a nice place to be. Everything feels high quality, but also feels like a last test of time, which is what you'd want one of these Civics to do. 
Um, I don't really find myself wanting for any more technology. Screen is good, very functional. Maybe, you know, heated seats would be great. You also can't adjust the uh, steering wheel as far as I can tell. But let's get this on the road. Let's take it for a drive. Talk about my thoughts as it compares to other cars in its class. Reverse camera, pretty low res, but you do get the lines that turn with the wheel. that turn signal sound. So starting off, as I said, we don't have any drive modes, but initial impressions, good amount of application of torque from the turbocharger and the CVT. Car gets off the line very nice and smooth. I like these turn signals. Driving position, plenty of visibility, not too uh, obscured. On those uh, C pillars, you can see plenty over the hood in all my blind spots. Fortunately, not being able to adjust the steering wheel, I do feel like I'm a little bit farther away, so I'm gonna pull myself a little bit closer. There we go. So I would say between a steering wheel, heated seats, and power adjustment, that would be something I would want. Ride is very nice. Oh, 85 miles per hour speed limit. Oh, that's great. Can rip on it then, you know, that's that's vandalism. But yes, ride is very compliant, car handles very nicely, brakes feel good, feel very nimble. I think this car weighs about like 3,400, 3,300 pounds. I'll put the correct number on the screen, but very agile through the corner. I switched to the boost because I want to see how quickly that turbo spools up and gives us some. some power and it's pretty immediate, pretty responsive. Not too much understeer when you're trucking it into a curve. I'm sure at the limit you would be wanting for something like an SI, Civic SI or a uh, Type R. You do get paddle shifters though. Try that out with the uh, sport transmission mode for the CVT. You don't get much feedback from the road in terms of the steering. A little bit of understeer into this corner. A little bit of power gets you out of it.
taking a little bit different route this time. But yeah, ride feels good. <laughs> Try this sport transmission mode. Besides looking like a dodo head with some tire spin, power went down pretty well, not too much wheel hop. We're just in that Acura Integra and while the CVT isn't the most pleasing sound, very smooth power delivery. Check out these paddles back in sport mode. Honestly, not really that important to have in something like this. I'm like waiting for like um, a blip from the throttle as I downshift and there isn't any because it just revs the engine higher. But even half throttle, you get a nice response from the engine. I would just stick with normal drive, very similar to what I said in that Integra review. Just let the transmission do its thing. You're not really gonna wanna take manual control. Yep, good visibility as I'm making a left-hand turn. I, like, I really like the chassis tuning and dynamics of these Civics. I think it translates well to the Integra in terms of a luxury experience, but they're just, they're very well controlled. You can put the power down well out of a corner. It's not gonna throw you back in your seat. Civic Type R would be for you if that's what you're looking for or an Acura Integra Type S. But for daily driving, plenty of get up and go, plenty of power, very responsive. 1.5 liter four cylinder turbo. Get brake hold. My $50,000 Audi doesn't even have brake hold because I guess the Germans don't believe in that or remote start. Yeah, very torquey off the line. Give this guy some space. Not that I'm gonna be ripping it behind him, but Can I get a little floored? I'll get like a, just floor it. A little bit hesitation off the line. I think that's an Acura Honda thing before applying the full power to get you off the line, but very well controlled. Plenty of speed to get on the highway. Road, noise, not terrible. NVH, very smooth. No noise, no vibration, no harshness into the cabin as we're on the highway. Wind noise, not much. Just that tire noise. You're gonna get a little bit more noise in the rear because of that hatch. But very nice highway cruiser, perfect for your daily commute. We could turn on adaptive cruise control. Let's see if there's a menu for that. So main sets your adaptive cruise control. Adaptive cruise control lane keeping assist. You could turn that on and then hit set. One click, one mile per hour increment. You can hold for five. 
you can adjust your following distance with this button. See how this handles this perch from merging. Nice, very responsive system. Slowed down for the person as I merged over. Maintains a good speed following distance. Yeah, this is nice. At $24,000, $25,000, that's a pretty good bargain to get. Adaptive cruise control, lane centering, all the, the driver safety systems you would ever want. So, we'll talk about the Civic and where it stands. We got the Mazda 3 hatchback. Now, if you equip it with the similar engine, I would say they're pretty in line from what I've read. Both pretty good handling, got a good ride, but also some good sharp driving dynamics. But I would say the Mazda has a more upscale cabin, more premium feel. Compared to this Honda Civic, uh, but you do get significantly less rear, rear rear seat practicality and cargo space. So I think as a daily driver for commuting, uh, you know, young professional, maybe the Civic would, or the the Mazda 3 sedan or hatch would be better. For somebody with a growing family needs to fit some child seats and an adult in the rear, I would take this hatch. Then we have the Toyota Corolla. And I think the Civic beats out the Corolla in everything except maybe predictive reliability and a little bit more intuitive of a uh, infotainment system, very nice Type S. But the driving dynamics, the handling, the um, the engine options for the Civic, especially with the Type R. But now we do have the GR Corolla, I would say the Civic would be a better option. Last thing with the Mazda 3 I forgot to mention is you can get that turbo and give yourself a lot more power and torque. I think that thing makes up to like 280, 290 Mazda 3 turbo. And to get that in this, you'd have to go to the Type R, which leaves you into manual and a much more desirable car, so you're not gonna be able to find one at a good price. But that car is, the Type R is on a different level than the Mazda 3 Turbo. So overall, I do like the Civic. I'm a big fan of it. Um, and it was a car on my list at the time. But I will say that the value proposition for an used Civic is not really there anymore. They're just so desirable as an economical car. They can get around 20 grand that I would spring for a newer Civic unless you were like me and enjoyed the styling of the older Civic. But you're not going to be getting a great deal on an older Civic like the 2021 and below versus the 22 because they just hold their value so well. They're reliable practical and they have a good balance for a daily driver and they're fuel efficient so with that being said hope everyone enjoyed the video please leave it a like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts on a Civic versus a Mazda 3 hatch or a Corolla hatch and also the sedan variants thanks for watching see you in the next one